So far in the previous lectures, we have seen how the CPU is virtualized using two techniques, either hardware assisted virtualization or full virtualization. In this lecture, we are going to do a little bit of a deep dive into how memory is virtualized. So we've already seen a high level overview of it in a previous lecture, but uh, let us recap the memory virtualization problem again. So a guest process that is running has its own guest virtual address space within the guest OS. And this is how the guest virtual address space looks like for any process. There are, there's the core data stack heap. It's composed of multiple pages and the high virtual addresses contain the guest OS and the page table maps all of this to guest physical memory. So the guest thinks it has a certain contiguous range of addresses, uh, some RAM, what it thinks it's, is its RAM. This is the guest physical address space and the page table of every process maps the pages in the virtual address space to frames in the physical address space of the guest, right? The guest page table captures these mappings from the virtual address space of the guest to the physical address space of the guest. So this is the case with any OS, but in the case of guest operating systems running on top of a VMM, what the guest thinks as it's RAM is not actually a contiguous piece of memory, but in fact, this is just memory in the user space hypervisor process. The user space hypervisor we've seen in the previous two lectures, memory maps a large chunk of memory to act as the guest RAM. So in reality, this is not located contiguously in RAM anywhere. Rather, this is mapped by the host page table. So this guest RAM is also divided into pages and is mapped to different physical frames in the host RAM. So this is the host or the machine physical address space. Here, the guest RAM is mapped into different locations in the host physical address space. So you have guest virtual addresses, you have guest physical addresses, and you have host physical addresses, right? So you need to translate from here to here. If a guest wants to access a certain memory location, a guest process, it will give out guest virtual addresses. We have to translate them all the way to host physical addresses for the guest to function properly, right? So we have the guest page table. This only maps from guest virtual address to guest physical address. And each guest OS thinks it has access to a certain RAM memory, but in reality, it does not, right? So what the guest thinks as its RAM is simply some memory in the hypervisor address space. So the hypervisor is a user space process which allocates some memory and it knows within its address space, this guest memory is located and it knows within the host virtual addresses, what are the host virtual addresses assigned to the guest RAM within its address space. The hypervisor knows this because it sets up this guest RAM as part of its user space memory. So the host virtual to guest physical addresses are known to the hypervisor and the host virtual to host physical address is known to the host OS. It knows this for all processes. So using these two pieces of information together, the host or the hypervisor together know the guest physical to host physical mapping. So you can go from the guest physical address to host virtual address because the hypervisor knows what the guest thinks is its RAM address zero is actually memory mapped at some address in my address space. So this is known in the hypervisor. This is known in the host OS. Together, you can go from GPA to HVA to HPA and the host OS, between the host OS and the hypervisor, they know the GPA to HPA mapping. That is in other words, the guest RAM is actually a user space process memory in the host and it is distributed across the host physical address space and therefore the host OS knows what the guest thinks is address zero is actually something else in the machine physical address space. Okay, so you have these two mappings. We will call them the guest page table and the host page table. This is not really a page table, but we will use the word page table or host page map to refer to this mapping. So now, which should the MMU use to translate? The MMU is, looks up the CR3. What should the CR3 point to? Now there are two solutions to this problem. The first is what is called shadow paging. 
the vmm will create a combined mapping it will use these two mappings to create a combined guest virtual to host physical mapping and the mmu is given this page table this combined page table is given and this uh, page table is called the shadow page table and this technique is called shadow paging and this is used in papers like the vmware workstation and systems like the vmware workstation based on full virtualization that we studied in the previous lecture another technique is to simply make the mmu hardware aware of virtualization and give it two pointers this page table and this page table you give two different pointers and let the mmu figure out let the mmu combine them to create a combined mapping on every address translation so this is what is used when hardware support is available this requires mmu to be aware of virtualization so whenever hardware support is available typically vmx mode also comes with ept support and the kmo kvm hypervisor whenever ept support is available it uses this technique so any hypervisor can use any of these two techniques based on what support is available from the underlying hardware so let us look at extended page tables in a little bit more detail this is the guest page table from guest virtual to guest physical addresses and this is the host page table or page map from guest physical address to host physical address this is one set of mappings and the in the case of extended page tables the cr3 points to this and there is another pointer called the ept pointer which points to this mapping and both of them together are used in address translation so how does address translation happen the mmu suppose the mmu is given a guest virtual address and it has to finally arrive at the host physical address how does it translate it starts by walking the guest page table you look up a guest virtual address and you start walking this page table note that this could be a hierarchical multi level page table so you first look up the first level get an address of the next level of the page table suppose let us consider one walk one step in this page table walk how does this happen so the guest pte you look you index the guest physical address uh, sorry you index the guest virtual address you get uh, the pte you look up the pte you get the physical address of the next level of the page table now this physical address that you get in the pte is a guest physical address you can't take this physical address go to ram and look up the next pte this physical address does not make any sense to the actual ram therefore you walk the guest page table look up the guest pt get the guest physical address of the next level and then what do you do you take this guest physical address go to the host page table walk this host page table to get the actual host physical address at that point you know the actual location of this page and then you go access that page note that this has to be done for every step in the guest page table walk if there is an n level guest page table and the mmu has to walk n levels of this page table for each step in this walk to go from one level to the other you will get a guest physical address of the next level you walk the entire host page table get the host physical address access that page and then in that page once again you look up the next page table for the next step right so every step in the guest page table walk translates to n steps in the host page table right therefore if there are n level page tables in both the guest and the host you will have n cross n n squared memory accesses in this page table walk a regular page table walk by the mmu had n steps now with extended page table you will have n squared steps because each step translates to n lookups in the host page table so this is the overhead of extended page tables now how do shadow page tables work you have once again the guest page table the host page table using this the vmm creates a combined shadow page table that maps from guest virtual address to host physical address now this page table if it has n levels you only have to walk n steps to translate using this page table so the page table walking is simplified and this combined mapping this combined page table is what the cr3 points to so now the hardware is not aware of two page tables like in the case of ept 
the hardware just gets a single pointer it will use this single pointer to walk an n level page table now how do you know if uh, how can you how is this page table updated what if the guest modifies this page table therefore this page table usually whenever shadow page tables are maintained by the vmm the original guest page tables are marked as read only all of these pages are marked as read only so that whenever the guest modifies them changes a page table entry it will trap to the vmm it's a privileged operation it won't be allowed it will be trapped to the vmm and the vmm can update the shadow so the shadow page table has to track all the changes in the guest page table and stay updated okay so how are the shadow page tables maintained let us understand in more detail so whenever the guest writes to cr3 right how does the vmm construct the shadow page table whenever the guest writes to cr3 this is a privileged operation it will trap to the vmm and now the vmm knows oh here is a page table these are all the pages of the page table by looking at the cr3 address it will know and the vmm will mark all the guest page tables as read only and using the information in the guest page table and the host in page table information it will construct the shadow page table set cr3 to point to it so the whenever the guest says set cr3 to this value the vmm will construct the shadow and set the cr3 to the shadow page table instead that is the guest never directly writes its page table to cr3 now this shadow page table can be built on demand you don't have to translate the entire guest page table to create the shadow instead you can only translate a few entries or you can even start with an empty page table and what happens if a page table is empty a memory access will cause a page fault so when a certain address x causes a page fault then you go to the guest page table host page table create the shadow page table entry and continue that is you can build the shadow page table on demand there is no necessity to build all levels of the page table right away you can build entry by entry on demand when it is used whenever there is a page fault of course you can also be proactive and build translate the entire guest page table to shadow but that is left up to the implementation in the vmm but the important thing is whenever the guest changes the page table because you've marked it as read only it traps to the vmm so that any changes to the guest page table it will result in the shadow entry also being updated now the other design decision here is a guest os keeps multiple page tables in memory there are multiple active processes there are multiple page tables in memory and when the uh, os switches to one process it sets the cr3 to that page table when it does a context switch to another process it sets the cr3 to another page table and so on but all of these page tables are around lying around in main memory okay so what about shadow page tables what should the vmm do should it keep around all the shadow page tables in memory also just like the original guest page tables now that is a design decision that is left up to the vmm so whenever the guest does a context switch the vmm can discard the old shadow page table and rebuild it later whenever the guest comes back to that page table again or the vmm can also maintain multiple shadow page tables in memory right so in the first case if you are discarding and reconstructing shadow then there is an overhead during context switch after a context switch once again your shadow page table has to be reconstructed but if you keep many shadow page tables in memory this also has an overhead because you will have to be tracking changes to all these page tables all the time so there are different overheads in both of these design choices and different vmms uh, exercise different choices on this direction so the other aspect is what happens with demand paging so we have seen that what is demand paging an operating system need not map every page to a physical frame it can do this on demand only when a page is accessed it can map it to a physical frame the process can be told that look you have so many pages in your memory but this page table entry can indicate that the page is not present for example the second page here is not mapped to any physical frame and in this way the os can conserve how many physical frames it is assigning to a process now what happens when this page is accessed by the process in when the cpu accesses this address the mmu tries to translate the page table does not have a valid entry and therefore this causes a page fault 
okay and this traps to the operating system in normal operating system it would trap to the regular os but in our case since all traps go to the vmm typically the vmm exits and the vmm not the guest os not the guest vm but the vmm the hypervisor will handle this page fault will get this page fault but the hypervisor doesn't know what to do right this is an internal matter of the guest os it is the guest os's problem to fix this page fault so in such cases what will the vmm do it will simply inject the fault back into the guest os and the guest os will handle the page fault and assign a physical frame to this page right so in summary whenever the page mapping is not done within the guest then the page fault will come to the vmm all faults all interrupts usually come to the vmm first and the vmm will pass it on to the guest os and the guest os will fix the page fault now you can also have another type of page faults which is now recall that the guest physical address is also mapped to actual host physical address by the host os and this is also user space process memory as far as the host is concerned and here also demand paging can happen that is for certain guest physical frames what the guest things are ram pages these may not be assigned physical memory by the vmm or the host right the host os might say i don't have enough physical frames i will not give this page a physical frame in such case also page faults happen for example when the shadow page table or extended page table is translating this translation won't go through corresponding to this guest physical address there is no physical frame assigned and this will result in a page fault now these page faults are handled by the host os or the vmm okay the guest os page table is fine the guest os does not have to be told of this page fault such page faults which result from pages missing frames missing in the host page table these are handled by the host or the vmm and they are not sent to the guest os so such page faults are called hidden page faults that is there are two levels of demand paging the guest os itself can do some demand paging and not assign frames to all pages the host os can also do demand paging and not assign physical frames to all the guests ram pages and these page faults that occur due to this mapping missing are handled by the host os and these page faults are percolated back are injected back into the guest os and these are handled by the guest os so in general the principle to note here is a host may not assign physical memory to all the guest ram pages if the guest thinks it has 2 gb of ram all 2 gb need not be assigned physical memory immediately it can be assigned to the guest on a need basis just like how user processes are assigned memory on a need basis similarly guest ram can also be assigned memory on a need basis especially when the host os is under memory pressure so in general when the host os is under memory pressure it can reclaim memory it can ask the vmm to reclaim some memory from the guest ram and remove some of these mappings and free up some frames from the guest physical address space and there are many ways to do this one easy way is what is called uncooperative swapping that is the vmm can randomly reclaim some guest ram pages the vmm tells the guest i have given you 1 gb of ram but uh, 0.5 gb of that it can just take away and not assign any physical frames to some of the guest ram pages and swap them out to disk this is called uncooperative swapping that is the guest is not aware of it the guest has not cooperated and whenever a page fault occurs a page fault will obviously occur when that guest ram page is accessed by the guest a page fault will occur and this page fault will be handled by the vmm or the host os and at that point a page is a physical frame is assigned to the guest ram right and this can hurt performance sometime because some important pages in the guest might also be swapped to the disk this is called uncooperative swapping and a host os or vmm can do this when there is too much memory assigned to guests and there is not enough physical ram that is there so another a more advanced technique to do this in a more polite gentle manner is what is called ballooning that is if the vmm wants to reclaim some memory from the guest it need not randomly pick some ram pages and swap them to disk instead it can request the guest to free up some pages 
and this is done via what is called a balloon device driver this technique is called ballooning that is the vmm exposes a certain dummy device to the guest os and this device will say i want some memory for myself therefore the guest os it will assign some memory to this device okay so the vmm can request this device to inflate itself this is called inflating the balloon the vmm can request this device to inflate itself and request some memory from the guest os now when the guest os assigns some memory to this device then the vmm can take these pages assigned to this device and free them up now what is the advantage of doing this because the guest has assigned memory to this device it won't assign this memory to some other process and therefore performance of regular user processes in the guest will not suffer right because this is memory assigned to some dummy device that is never used the vmm can go ahead and free this up right so this has the advantage that other user processes their pages are not swapped out so the performance of other user processes in the guest is not affected and this is cooperative and it has lesser impact on guest performance but the disadvantage is that of course the guest os should cooperate if the guest os says i will not give memory to this dummy device then there's nothing you can do so this is a cooperative technique it depends on the guest os cooperating and this can also take time the guest os can you know free up some pages think about what pages to free up and you know it might take some time to assign enough memory to this dummy balloon device so ballooning is a cooperative way but it also has lesser impact on performance of the guest processes and there's also a third way to conserve memory on the host when there are multiple guests running and this is called memory sharing for example between the guest ram pages there could be multiple pages with identical content for example if two guests are running the same os image or a lot of guests have zero empty pages in their ram so there could be lot of pages with identical content in the guest physical address spaces so what the vmm or the host can do is map the same physical frame into the page tables of multiple guests right the same physical frame is assigned to multiple guest operating systems and they all share the same memory because it has the same identical content now how do you find out the similarity periodically the vmm will scan the memory of all the guests compute some hash and if the same hash exists in both guest uh, pages then it knows that the content is similar it can then if the hash matches it can compute uh, match the content and if the content also matches then it knows okay i can i did not give two separate physical frames i can give the same physical frame to both these guests right so this requires some computation overhead in the background to find out the similarity so in summary we have studied memory virtualization we have seen memory virtualization can be done either with extended page tables or shadow page tables and we've also seen some techniques to reclaim memory at the vmm or host level from the guests if the host is running out of memory and these techniques are uncooperative swapping ballooning or memory sharing so this paper of memory manage of memory management in the vm vmware es esx server has all of these details more details on memory virtualization and memory reclamation techniques